Quick apology, I jump around a little bit in this video, but if you want to see the various repairs that I made, you can go down into the description and see the links. There are chapters that are set up in YouTube, so you can go directly to what you want to see if you want to get the repair information that you need for your boat. But uh, the first repair I did with the coil ended up working temporarily, and then it failed again. So I actually did complete the, the total repair, but it was two phases in order to get this thing running properly again. So bear with me. Again, you can go down to chapters to check it out, but I did inevitably get the boat running properly. I've got a 1999 Sanger DLX, which is a competition ski boat. Again, it's 1999, so it's 26 years old. And this boat has been flawless, pretty much flawless for 26 years. A lot of people say, the best two days of, of the life of a boat owner is the day you buy it and the day you sell it. I've been super impressed with this boat. It's got a 5.7 liter uh, electronically fuel injected engine. Basically, it's a Corvette engine in a boat. Well, it's only failed me twice. The first time was a water pump and power that was my fault. But this time, the vehicle or the vehicle, the boat just stopped in the middle of the lake and it wouldn't start up. It would actually rotate the engine, it would fire a little bit, and then it would die. Well, I've towed a lot of people off the lake, and I guess my little complaint here is that after all the people I've helped on the lake, I couldn't get anybody to come to our rescue, so my significant other and I had to actually tow our boat swimming a third of a mile from one dock to another to get the boat back to my dock so I could get it up on the lift and start doing some diagnostics on it. Now, interestingly enough, I, uh, I didn't realize I left it on the boat, but I have a diagnostic scanner. It's called the CodeMate that, that is designed for this specific uh, marine application. And when you turn the ignition to the on position, you turn that device on, it gives you flashing lights that you count, and it gives you the indication of what the problem is or some kind of diagnostic information. So this was a 45, which indicates that I've got a problem with the ignition system. Now, given this boat is 26 years old, it's seen a lot of vibration, a lot of heat cycles, just a lot of use, many hours of use, lots of load. I'm going to go ahead and replace both the coil and the coil driver, which is the ICM, the ignition control module. I'm just going to go ahead and do it I'm going to, uh, because it's just preventive maintenance for future use. Uh, I don't want to have a problem with this in the future trying to repair one part, and then that just leads to subsequent other parts. I will test the coil. I don't think I know how to test the ICM. I'll look that up and I'll show that in this video if I know if I can figure out how to test the ICM. But I'm going to go ahead and replace it. I'll show you the code, mate. All these things that I'm going to replace on this particular engine, which is the 5.7 EFI. I just I think I mentioned that already. I'm going to link in the description of this video so you can check those out, especially that code, mate, because it's super helpful. It's like an OBD2 device you use for your car. And uh, and hopefully we'll get this thing back on the water because in less than two weeks, I got my best friend coming for wakeboarding and I need to be able to get that boat on the water. So stay tuned. First thing I want to do is show you the code mate. So here it is. I've tapped it into the wiring harness. It goes to the PCM up there. And how you use this, you'll turn your ignition key to the on, not running position. You don't want the engine running. And then you'll turn this switch to the on position and this light will start flashing. And I believe what it gives you in initially is a 12 indication, one flash, then two flashes, and that repeats a few times. And then after that, it'll give you your diagnostic trouble codes. And in my case, it was four flashes, pause, five flashes, and that was a 45 indicating there was a problem with the ignition system. Do a quick open box of these ignition components. Here's the coil, just a standard coil. Take it down to the boat and compare it to what is actually still on the boat. Then I'll do it simultaneously so I know where the electrical connections go. Should be pretty easy. And this is the ICM or ignition control module. Amazing how big that thing is. But uh, looks like it's pretty good quality. It's just a matter of swapping one out for the other. So let's just go get it done. Let's see where the coil and the ICM are in this thing. So here's the Merc Cruiser engine, if I can talk. And there is the distributor and it's 5.7. And there's the coil right next to the exhaust manifold in the back of the engine. And now 
I need to figure out where the ICM is. And I don't see anything that looks like the ICM that I bought. <clears throat> that's the slave solenoid right there. And this is, I wonder if that's the PCM. But apparently the ICM is supposed to be underneath the distributor. But I don't see it. I had to do a little bit of head scratching, driving my own intelligence, because the ignition control module that I got that was based on resources on the internet was not correct. Uh, I used my serial number. It just didn't align properly. So I'm returning it back to Amazon, again, the beauty of Amazon. But uh, I had to actually call Mercruiser because I could not find anything online that told me which ignition control module I have. And when I got online on the phone with uh, Mercruiser, Mercruiser Technical Support, and I'll leave that phone number in the description of this video. They hooked me up right away. They told me that the coil driver for this version of the Mercruiser is in the PCM. You don't have a separate ICM. And uh, that's different from the Thunderbolt 4, which is what I had the ICM from. That ICM that I showed before goes with the Thunderbolt 4 ignition, which I think is carbureted. This is electronically fuel injected. So this is the Thunderbolt 5. And again, the PCM drives the coil. I'm gonna replace the coil first. It's located right here underneath the uh, spark plug wires and right beside the fuel line, which makes it kind of hard to get to that bolt, but I can kind of pull it away and use a ratchet to get that out. Coil's removed and make sure you make note of the positive and negative terminals on the coil. In my case, the red goes to positive. And I also, strongly recommend, which I'm going to do if I can get this focused in, is to clean up these contacts with sandpaper and to put some dielectric grease on there to prevent corrosion. Uh, I don't know. This could have been causing me some of the problems, but um, who knows? I'm going to put the new coil on and test it out again after sanding this down and putting on some dielectric grease. There's a nice and shiny lug. That's what it should look like before you reattach it. And again, I'm going to put the dielectric grease on it and I'll link it in the description as well as the coil. EV grease, use this on spark plugs or spark plug boots, but it's good for um, keeping down corrosion and keeping the moisture out of the contact. So there it is, the original Mercruiser coil. So that thing is 26 years old. Uh, it's a little bigger than the new one. Hopefully that isn't an indication of any kind of power output. Uh, hopefully it also fits the bracket, we'll see. Uh, the bracket actually had a lot of extra play in it, so I'm sure it's gonna work out. It smells like success. I'm gonna give myself a thumbs up there. I'm gonna take it out for a test run, and then I'm gonna go up to the bench and test the old coil out and see if the coil's bad or if it was all the corrosion on those lugs. I've got the old coil on the bench, and I wanted to confirm that the coil was the problem, even though I replaced it and it's running. So I'm gonna check the primary and secondary coils. The primary should be 0.85 to 1.05 ohms, and the secondary should be 7.5 to 8.3 kilo ohms. I'm setting my meter to ohms and look at the primary circuit. And I'm at 3.5 ohms, so that's definitely above spec, way out of spec. And now we'll look at the secondary circuit, 10.85, versus a high end of 8.3 kilo ohms. So the coil was definitely bad. It was a good thing to replace. I'm still gonna do some additional tune-up like replacing distributor cap and rotor. I'll link all these things in the description as well as the CodeMate diagnostic tool that I used on this Mercruiser. Maybe it'll apply to your boat. You need to check the specs to make sure. But anyway, it looks like I'm back on the, back on the lake. Although I thought I had fixed it because the coil was out of spec, and I actually drove the boat around the lake at high speed and it ran pretty good. It had a like a low end miss, and again I thought it was maybe water in the uh, in the gas. Came back, parked it, and then decided to take it out again. And as soon as I started it up, it was running rough. Got the engine alarm, and uh, I had enough power to get me back on the boat lift before it stalled and it's dead again. So I'm thinking that this has got to be a Hall Effect sensor issue. Take this back off. 
And the Hall effect sensor basically measures the rotation of the rotor button. Those gaps are what provide sensor input to this device right here. And as this is turning, you can see the gap blocks the signal and it gives some indication or it gives some indication for the coil to fire at the appropriate time. So given this thing is actually pretty rusty, let me see if I can zoom in on there. Wow, it's even worse. I, I guess my eyesight's not that good. I didn't realize it was that bad. So clearly this thing should have been replaced. I couldn't tell it was that bad just looking at it without the zoom here. So I bought a kit to replace it. Let's take a look at that. There are a couple kits out there on Amazon. I picked the Quicksilver because of their reliability. There are a couple of uh, Chinese brands that uh, have questionable reliability, but you're gonna pay more. This is about uh, four times more expensive. This cost me about a hundred bucks delivered to get a new Hall Effect sensor that I think I can depend on. Uh, it's a direct replacement. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the old one and install this one. It actually comes with some amazing instructions. I, I've never seen instructions this good coming with anything, to be honest with you. It's like a little book. So, uh, so I'm really impressed with it. There are only two wires that need to be disconnected. These are the two signal wires and they're color coded. So it should be very easy to put them back together. And these are press fit. And I brought more dielectric grease down here to the lake when I put these back together. Uh, but there's only a couple screws that hold this in. The two outer screws would hold that Hall effect sensor in. Screws are loosened. I've disconnected the electrical connections and this thing should pull straight up. If I can get it out, let's see. Might be because the wires are just so old, they don't want to want to bend. It is hot out here. So I'm sweating like a pig, but there it is. Wow. Uh, that looks pretty rough. I'm surprised I didn't notice that. Now here they are compared to each other. The thing I really like about the new one is that it's a sealed unit. You don't have all these electronics exposed. That's kind of mind blowing there. But the other thing is that this one comes with a three wire connection and you can see that this is just a ground that needs to be connected to some lug. Uh, this one didn't have that. Uh, I don't know if that's an improvement, but you can see the wire coloring is identical for the other two wires that have the same type of connection. So this is a perfect, uh, perfect replacement for the old one. New sensor is installed with the included screws. Now I just need to connect the wires and find a good location for the ground. Attach the ground right here. I had a good lug next to the distributor. So now I just need to put the distributor cap back on and all we gotta do is test. All right, so the engine's running. Of course, I did this with the coil. So I'm gonna go take it for a test drive and see if any of the, uh, the rough idle or rough running is eliminated. Cross your fingers. Definitely successful this time. Took it out for a test run, had no problems other than it's still a slight, it's not, a, I don't know if it's a misfire, but it's just not running as smooth as it should at lower RPM. At higher RPM, it runs perfectly. I cleared codes and checked again with the code mate and it proves that there are no diagnostic trouble codes coming back. So the ignition system is fixed. So the coil and Hall effect sensor that I replaced uh, definitely took care of the problem. Now I just need to put some, I'm probably gonna put some, uh, maybe some Iridium plugs uh, to get some better performance and longevity out of it. Similar to what I've done to a 2014 Mazda CX-5 and a 10 Gen F-150. I'll link those videos below. But now it's time to get back on the water.